I'm out here looking at some of the wood that I have. I don't know which piece I want to turn. I know I'd like to turn all of them, but I can't do it all today. I'm going to grab one of these. I'll meet you at the lathe. See if you can figure out which one I pick. I've decided to go with the English walnut. It's a pretty hefty sized piece of wood and I'll still cut it down more. But when I was trimming some of these big logs up here a week or so ago, and I made a short video on my drying box. These are some of the pieces. And the reason I decided to cut them up is when I cut this down and saw the grain, this, this piece came off of there, and saw that grain in there, I thought, well, I'll be saving these and cutting little strips out of them. This is uh, about 11 inches tall. It's 12 that way, and it's 7 this way. This is where the really pretty grain is. That's going to be the side of my turning. This will be the top and bottom of it. Let me get this cut up and we'll get it mounted in the lathe and we'll get to turning. I've got the corners cut off and I can see some beautiful grain in here and this is what I was hoping for. I'll go ahead and get it round using my 5 8 bowl gouge and that might be it for the day but it's a good start and we're turning about 550 RPM. Look at that. And we are almost round. Unfortunately, it is getting late in the afternoon and I've got some other things to do, but wow, I cannot wait to get a shape on this. Let's see if we can get a few more RPM. 700. That's so much fun, I want to do it more of it. I don't want to cut any more off. I'm going to move the camera over the top of this. You can see this beauty. Okay, look at this. That is pretty amazing looking. Naturally, this is the end grain here, but that is so pretty. All right. And it's wet. I'm surprised it's this wet. I'm going to put a plastic bag over this. And uh, I'll get back on it tomorrow. I let this sit all night. It, it looks about the same as it did. So it looks fairly stable. I don't have a lot of time, but I want to put a little bit of shape on it for now. And then I'll get back to it a little bit later. I'm going to start by taking some of the wood away from here. This is about the diameter I'm looking for, but the ends are going to get cut down quite a bit. Same 5 8 bowl gouge and we're doing 780 RPM. So uh, the shape I have in mind, I'm not really 
one up on that. I like to watch the grain and this is just, I just have to say it again, it's amazing. So now I think I'll take some of the top down. Well, it's actually resembling what I'm thinking. I want to flatten this off. I probably want to... No, I'll just flatten that off here. We utilize this area here for a tenon. I think I'll mark for a tenon right here and cut some of this wood back, getting back to the more colorful wood. And this is a little soft here anyways. Finish this up with the diamond point. I think I'll flip it around now because I'm just not quite sure what I want to do up here and I'd like to see it from the other direction. I've got it flipped around and I originally thought of a much smaller top, and maybe I still will. I also was going to have a smaller bottom, but I sort of like what I have here. So I'll start by getting this top flattened out, and we'll go from there. I think I have the shape fairly close, so I'm going to go over it with a negative rig scraper. And then I think I'm going to drill as big a hole as I can in here and hope that it stays together because it's a lot wetter than I expected. 
but I really like the wood, so we're going to see if we can get something out of here. I'm going to see if I can get a hole drilled down about four inches, and I'll start with it's like an inch and a quarter bit. far that is. Yeah. We'll get as far as this will go and we'll put a bigger bit in. I have it drilled four and a quarter inches down with a one and seven eighths bit. Now I need to try to hollow this out. So I'll use this homemade gooseneck for one tool. And I recently was given a gift card to Rockler, so I bought this Robert Swerby hollowing setup. It came with this bit that has a rounded end, and it has this. It's more like a scraper, so I think for cleaning it up that might be good. Then it has a similar bit to the first one, but it's pointed, so I think it would be more aggressive. You're not going to be able to see a lot, but I'll try to show a little bit of each one of these tools. I'll probably end up turning in reverse using my straight uh, shafted carbide tool, like this. Well, let's go ahead and do some of this. I don't know. It might take a while, but uh, I think it's kind of important to get it hollowed out because it is still wet. I notice it's a lot drier, though, than when I started. Go ahead and start with this tool and see how it works. Well, I think they'll both work. It's just going to take a little while. So, like I said, I'm not going to make you watch all of that. I'm getting there. It's uh, slow going. I've got the lathe in reverse now, and I have a screw locking my chuck down so it won't unscrew itself. And we'll turn this way for a while. I don't really have too much to blend in here and not all that much there. So I think I'll just use 80 grit and start sanding this and blend those two areas together and we can sand the rest of it and get some sealer on it. It's certainly not dry yet but you can see that it's sanding quite well and there's dust coming off while I sand. I sanded this. I'm, I'm looking at this area here. I think that's too big in diameter there. And I think the base is a little bit too big as well. So we'll cut down, continue on down, and see what it looks like. Got a half inch bowl gouge, 830 RPM.
All right, that's it for now. Off to a barbecue. I sanded the inside to 220. I think that's as far as I'll probably go. This is at 80 grit now. I'll go ahead and show you some of the sanding with the 120. Got the lathe turning and reverse at 400 RPM. So what I can reach there, the two inch disc, I'll do, and then in here, take some 120, and I'll just sand it like this. And I can go over that a little bit, and then I'll turn it forward. I'll do that through 400 and then we'll put some sanding sealer on it. So I'll see you soon. I put a coat of sanding sealer on the inside and it actually bled through. So I went ahead and put a thin coat on the outside, let it dry, and then I did a final sanding with 400 grit. This wood didn't need that, but it does help sometimes if you have wood that's hard to sand, is to put a thin coat of sanding sealer on it and then sand it again. Let's go ahead and put a coat on here and maybe we can see the grain popping even though it's already had a coat on there. Oh yeah. I will be back a little bit later. I have the final finish on this and I want to wait until I cut this tenon off so you can see it all at one time. I think it's just got some amazing grain in it. I'll go ahead and remove this tenon, get it sanded and I will be right back. Well, that came right off. I had it on this little spindle here. It wasn't going to go anywhere. And it had a paper towel wrapped on it. And I knew it wouldn't fly off. So I'll get the bottom sanded, sign, and some finish on it. And I'll be right back. Well, here it is. And I really did want to wait to the end to show you the grain in this beautiful piece of English walnut. It's just spectacular. Finish 6 inches in diameter. It's 5 inches tall. It's 2 and 11 sixteenths at the top. And the base is 2 and 7 eighths. And you really can't see inside, but I think the photos will show it. I got it down to about a quarter of an inch. And I wanted to go that far because I knew it was wet. And I was surprised that it was that wet. And I got it down to quarter then the moisture came out pretty fast. I was able to sand the outside and the inside was harder to sand so I put a thin coat of Zinsser Seal Coat in there and sanded all of that away. I used Zinsser Seal Coat on the outside and I used Minwax to wipe on poly. And then I buffed it out with the axe abrasive paste and the polish just to get that finish right there. It's really nice. And I put some walnut oil on the inside just so it would stay breathing because there still could be a little bit of moisture in it. So that's it. I think it is one very beautiful piece of English walnut. It came from the tree that was on our friend's place. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to let me know if you liked the video. A thumbs up would be great, but I also love reading your comments and I will do my best to answer them all. A special thanks to all my subscribers and if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. I do all types of turnings and feel free to let me know what you'd like to see. Thanks again and until the next time, see you later.